how to return to your relaxed self this holiday season. Joining us tonight, we have Debbie Barker with us here. She's actually out in Georgia, and where you are in for a great treat here tonight. Perhaps you're taking December off from your business, except here watching the show, or maybe you're at least wondering how to get a week back before the new year starts. As you take your personal time off in any form, tonight here we have Debbie Barker, who a Reiki master, a practitioner of all things relaxation on um, energy and energy healing as well, too. And she'll be going into how to make the time, this time, this personal time off, the most meaningful for you to return to your relaxed self and really just get the new year off running uh, to a great start. And I want to start off with just, you know, let's get right into it. We're going <laughs> to, so Debbie, was it always easy for you to relax? Oh, no, not at all. That's why I had to learn all these tricks. <laughs> There when, no way I was like, when did you feel the need to learn? Like when, what, what was that moment for you where you were like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do better. I gotta do better. Like, I just need to, yeah. What, what was that moment for you? Oh, you, I, you know, when you're not sleeping and you wake up and your brain is all foggy and you're going through the day and it's, I call it newborn brain, you know, when you are with your newborn kids all night long. And it was like, well, this is not working for me. I've got to make a change. So that's when that was. Yes, 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 yes. And to give you a little more details about Debbie, Debbie became a Reiki practitioner in 2004, and she has not looked back. And for those who aren't familiar with what is Reiki, great question. Let's do that first. So Reiki is a Japanese technique to relax the body and the mind. And after Debbie became a practitioner, a few years later, she then became a master, <laughs> a Reiki master supporting other practitioners along their journey of mastery, right? But tonight's not a, a not, it's not a Reiki, you know, get your certificate. That's not what this episode is. But essentially, <laughs> it's how do you use those Japanese techniques and to really get yourself this more relaxed, right? And getting yourself back to your relaxed self this holiday season to really truly reset and refresh for the new year from an energy perspective, right? Usually I go into different tips. I've gone through different tips and episodes on marketing and business stuff and the business side of things and how to relax, the time management, productivity side of how to get yourself to your relaxed self. And Debbie is here to show us the Reiki Japanese healing side of things, right? <laughs> the natural methods of healing. And Debbie continues to study other energy healing techniques as well. Lots of names uh, to them. <laughs> she can to describe those. Uh, Jinshin Jitsu? Jutsu? Yes. Oh, look at me. Look at me in front of the yes. um, and But here's the thing. Um, when Debbie is not helping others take a break from stress with her energy practice, she's spending time with her two awesome adult children, Kristen and Timothy. And she also enjoys rollerblading and touring on a motorcycle with David, her incredible husband since 1980, going on, what, 41 years. Look at that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And Debbie's taking time away from her family for these next 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> so we're really grateful here today uh, to share with you how to make this holiday season the most meaningful for you to return to your relaxed self. And so for those who are unfamiliar, though, what is the show? Entrepreneurship is a marathon with yours truly, Vanessa Zami, <laughs> every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And maybe someone shared this episode with you. Maybe you're here because you're supporting Debbie. Maybe you're coming across this on my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, the red button, subscribe below, scroll to the bottom a little bit of the video. You'll see the button that says big subscribe button there. Click that if you haven't already. I'm giving you a little couple seconds. Okay, but either way, you're probably thinking, what is this show about? So we're going to just give you a quick little asset here. My name is Vanessa Zami, the best-selling author of Finish, The Solopreneur's Guide to Getting Stuff Done. And I'm the creator of the Hustle and Breathe Business Accelerator, through which I consult ambitious 9 to fivers like you on how to grow their profit-producing, purpose-driven business without the overwhelm. Your efficiency, your productivity, and profitability so that you can reduce the overwhelm and confusion in your life. You can enjoy your life. Entrepreneurship is a marathon. And if you've chosen to step into that marathon, absolutely, let's go. So what has been, as I do every single episode, for those who are new, what has been your win of the week? What has been your win of the week, right? And at some point, I do this every Tuesday, so at some point I'm going to ask you what's been your win of the year. But today, I'm going to ask you, what has been your win of the week, right? Taking this moment to celebrate. It's very easy as an entrepreneur to say, maybe you haven't hit your goals for the week or the month or the quarter. Maybe you're not where you thought you should be today. Maybe you launched something recently and it didn't go as you planned, but there's probably something that went well. So in the past seven days, what has been your win of the week? Or maybe just today, 
right? It could be personal, it could be business, but what has been your one of the week? What are you celebrating? What are you rewarding yourself for um, during this holiday season, right? Type it in the comments and share with us. If you're watching a replay, put hashtag replay in the comments on LinkedIn or Facebook or on YouTube and let us know, right? In the comments, what has been your one of the week? Debbie, what has been your one of the week? Oh my goodness. I'm well, I'm working on a very surprise Christmas gift for my husband. Oh, okay, okay. And just finalized a lot of the, the big pieces of it. So I'm just waiting to see the finished product. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Well, that's great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, what has been my win of the week? I would say, I usually don't. <laughs> probably plan to an answer for this every episode, but I usually don't. Um, but, I mean, lots of, lots of those are the lens that I want to, more collabs um, that I've scheduled for 2022 to essentially connect and share more of my training in other people's communities and share essentially more of my training with business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, and so how to grow your purpose-driven business without the burnout or overwhelm. So that's been a win of the week. Yeah, that's been a win of the week. Ooh, also I got published my syllabus. For the course that I'm teaching at the All university. right. Yes, Excellent. that's a win that happened today. It was like a only a few minutes, but it was a win. It was a win. Um, so I love that. Yes, that was great. So let's get into it though, Debbie. Let's get into it, right? Because tonight is about how can people, how can our viewers here return to their relaxed self this holiday season, right? And you mentioned it wasn't always easy for you to relax, right? And what made you decide, you mentioned that, you know, maybe, well, you suggested, right, that you were, like, losing sleep and all that jazz. What, like, what made you decide to learn? What was that moment when you said, I'm going to sign up for Reiki? And why Reiki, right? There are other relaxing well, uh, yeah. Yes, there are a lot of other energy modalities. Um, I know seven of them at this, at, at this point. Um, but I liked Reiki because it relaxes not only the mind, but also the body. Mm. And my husband's definition is he feels like he's had a massage, except he gets to keep his clothes on. There's no oils and I don't touch him. That's his definition of Reiki. Okay. Mm. There and go. everybody says, well, that's no fun, but okay. Um, but I just found that I couldn't turn my mind off. It just kept racing. And I would try to sleep at night, but I would keep thinking about my to-do list or, oh, I have to remember to do this or I have to, you know, and it just I just couldn't relax. And then when I started learning Reiki and, you know, you, you learn by working on each other, it was like all of a sudden I was relaxed. I couldn't believe the difference. It was incredible. So you just have to have an open mind. I love it. I love it. And we have a viewer here on LinkedIn um who was like saying hey to you uh, but essentially yeah depending on what platform you're watching we may or may not be able to show the comments here we go oh yes 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 melinda says love that absolutely love it love it um and thank you melinda for joining us here tonight yes absolutely and yes there we go love it i was just about to type the definition of reiki also in the in the comments um but what did he say right he said that if you want to repeat it again it's reiki it's is getting a beautiful massage it's, wow. it's like you've had a massage, except you get to keep your clothes on yes. and there's no oil and I do not touch them. Love that, folks. Love that. And so, Debbie, different people, you know, needing to relax for different reasons during this holiday season. Could be business, could be personal. Then you have within personal, a bunch of other stuff. And we're going to get into those specific things, like, right, you know, like when maybe you're dealing with some trauma, maybe you're dealing with some death, maybe you're dealing with just, you know, the stress of the holidays and expectations. But let's start in general. What are, would you say the top three tools people can use to relax? Okay. The first one is very quick. All right. Are you ready? You're going to pretend to belly laugh. All right. I'm going to give you an example. And anybody, just feel free to laugh with me. Ready? Here goes. <laughs> okay. So you feel different. All of a sudden, you, you hear how silly you sound, and it makes you start laughing for real. So that's the first thing, is to try to do the belly laugh. And people, if you're in your cars driving to work and you don't want to go and you do this belly laugh, people are just going to try to wonder, what is she listening to? I want to hear that too. So that's number one. Number two, it's called the three by three method. And you can find this, it's a TED Talk by Phil Bossier. And the first thing that you do 
is you name an object in the room. <coughs> That's a chair. Then you breathe in and out very slowly. And you repeat it three times. And believe it or not, you're going to feel your body just relax down. I like to use this one like if somebody's at a doctor's office, especially if you're at the doctor's office with your aging parent who has to be seen, you're under a lot of stress. So this is just a really nice, quiet way to do the three by three method while you're just sitting in that room because nobody knows you're doing it. Okay, now here's the biggie. It's called four, seven, eight breathing. And the first thing that you do before you start this, it, it's going to stop anxiety in its tracks. You're going to take your tongue, you're going to put it on the roof of your mouth, right behind your two front teeth. The reason you're doing that is because that's where your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous systems come together. You're going to leave your tongue on the roof of your mouth, on that fleshy part, the whole time you do this, okay? Perfect, Vanessa. Okay, now. I want you to breathe in with that tongue up there. Breathe in for a count of four. Ready? Four, three, two, one. Now hold your breath for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you want to do that four times. And the whole time, though, your tongue stays up there, never moves. It's really hard to do. But once you start doing it, it just becomes second nature. And you want to do that twice a day for six weeks to really feel yourself calm down. But if you ever wake up in the middle of the night and it's like all, you're hit with all this anxiety, do the four, seven, eight breathing because it's very, very soothing and very relaxing. Those are my three, three top things I do to relieve stress and feel better. I love that. I love that. Let's go back to that belly laugh. I feel like it's like very timely, you know, for those who may believe in Santa Claus. And it's, it's I don't know, I don't know. It seems like it's like, you know, we're going to get back into that vibe here. You know, it's like you can sort of find your relaxed self while also entertaining your children. Uh, should you have more <laughs> for a while, you know, being weird. Like even if you laugh out loud in the street with the belly laugh, It'll be fine. People will just think that you're practicing for a Santa Claus audition, and it's okay. You'll just blend in. There you so go. Good. Yeah. There's no reason to be concerned, you know? Uh, so let's all do that together. Why not? Okay, well, ready? We'll demonstrate it for us. Well, can you demonstrate it okay. for us in the belly laugh? Yes. Here we go. Ready. <laughs> that was so <laughs> Yeah. But that's what you have to do. Yes, and I was like, and I don't know about you. I don't know about those watching, but I know when I saw Debbie doing that, I was also pleasurably entertained as well too. <laughs> um, and so, and not only do you feel better as a person laughing, probably, but also the people watching you <laughs> will also feel better too. You get to spread the joy. So yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. I got to tell you, yes. I had a one of my Reiki clients. She's up north, and I told her about this. She's been going through cancer treatments for the past year. Mm. Every time she goes in for a treatment, her blood pressure is up and they keep telling her she must have the white coat syndrome. So this has been going on for a year. So she went in before they put that cuff on her. She said, wait a minute, I have to laugh. They said, well, OK, lady. So she did the belly laugh. She said, OK, you can put that cuff on now. They put the cuff on and it was normal. Her blood pressure was normal just from doing the belly laugh. I like that. I like that. Yes, so yes, yes. I love that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not surprised, honestly, you know, like <laughs> it's the what the blood pressure is up because typically sometimes they'll say uh, it's because of stress and other such things. I know that, you know, if I've had like a there was one time when I had like a morning, I was like, oh, my God, what's happening with my boss and stuff. <laughs> I had a doctor appointment in the middle of that morning. So I went to the doctor appointment and lo and behold, the blood pressure was up. But then right. the next week I went to the doctor and the blood pressure was normal. And I was like, there you go. Um, so. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Well, Debbie needs a break from the belly laugh. So I'm going to try to attempt to do it. <laughs> Debbie needs a break. So I'm going to try to attempt to do it. Okay, here we go. Everyone, oh, if you're watching, do it with me. <laughs> Unless you're driving, then, you know, take a break. Don't, don't you know, don't make yourself uh, be dangerous. Pull, pull over to the side. But okay, here we go. Okay. This is, this is kind of like nerve-wracking. Okay, sorry. 
<laughs> kind of fucking okay. Um, uh, okay, here we go. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, I really never, okay. Okay, here we go. Though. I feel so um, in the chest. Yeah. Here we go. Um, but yes, yes, yes. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, great. Okay. And then also the breathing techniques you mentioned. Um, really powerful things. So thank you for sharing with us with that. And let's, you know, here's the thing, as I mentioned, right? There are different people with different reasons that they need to relax, right? And life in general ends in death. And during the pandemic, there are a lot more of those who experience death in a short time than usual. And so for that person who perhaps maybe the holiday season isn't such a peaceful time and maybe they feel guilty for laughing or whatever it may be, but they definitely need to relax. Like they're not necessarily relaxed, but definitely need to not have that high blood pressure. Right. And, but it's very easy to, when you're thinking of happy season, I think they mentioned under some study that says, you know, the holidays is tends to also come with a lot of unfortunate, unfortunate untimely deaths too. Um, but with that being said, relaxing means a little something different for that person. What are one to two things you would suggest for them? I would do like just set aside time that maybe they're going to go and have a bubble bath that night. Mm. Put something in your day that is relaxing to you, or it just might be, you're going to give yourself time to sit, put your feet up and have a cup of tea and to take care of yourself. So that's the first thing I would do. And the second thing I would write a letter to the person that crossed over Tell them what's on your mind. You know, are you at the point where you're angry with them or you're at the point where you just really miss them and they're still up on that pedestal? They're still not a normal person. There's seven stages of grief and you're going to go through each one. So wherever you are, just write to that person. Tell them what's in your mind and then that way it, it will come out and you can deal with it better. I love that. I love that. That was so, yes. Writing that letter and just like putting yourself in that space to open up and be vulnerable and not without judgment, right? Being vulnerable without judgment because you're just, you're writing to the paper. Um, so, you know, and allowing yourself to do that. I love that. I love that. And let's say for those who, you know, how about maybe it's like, well, a different way, like for some people, you know, hanging around family, it's like fun and family and they're like, Ooh, yes. And for others, it's like, oh, oh, oh. like love the family, but uh, <laughs> um, and uh, what's a key for them or what's a tip that you would give for them, right? The ones who okay. are just, like, a week in the cabin up north somewhere. For those people that have a hard time with people in their family, mm -hmm. I want them to think of something good about that person. And sometimes it could just be, well, they brush their teeth. They don't have bad breath for just just think of the good things about the person. And before you you go to attend the event or you're you know there for a couple of days. Just start talking out what kind of time you want to have. All right. I want everybody to get along. I want us to all play games and connect. Um, I want us all to speak nicely to each other. And everyone's going to get together and you know, thank you angels for making that happen. Just say out loud what it is you want. What, what do you want to have happen? Call that energy to you. And yes, you may not care for comments that they make, but turn them off. Just let them go in one ear and out the other. Send that person some love. Say, I know you're acting like a jerk because you're so into yourself because you don't have any self-confidence and, and that's okay. I accept you that way. Or you're such a loud mouth because no one pays attention to you. That's okay. You know, just, just make everything. Okay. Let it just roll off your back and just, just know you're going to walk in there. You're going to have the best time. You're going to send everybody love and everyone's going to walk away and feel a connection. I love that. Send that. The, the key thing that I think you mentioned was like, send that person some love. 
right? Send that person. Oh, it changes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, Debbie gives me some powerful tips. We'll be, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after this quick break. So I believe I know some things about you and your current situation. I know that you're frustrated, you're overwhelmed, you're struggling, you're discouraged, right? You dream of becoming a calm and confident full-time entrepreneur with abundant time and financial freedom. Currently, perhaps you're focused on leaving your demanding corporate job and growing your business. Or maybe you're just focused on just growing your business, right? But let me ask you a question. Would you be ecstatic if you could increase your revenue be more consistent with your marketing and social media and get more time to work on your business and be more productive. Because if you could do those things, ultimately that would mean you could make a difference in your community, city, state, country, or world while having more freedom to do what you want when you want, which would be amazing. Unfortunately, I also get the sense um, that there are some roadblocks for you here as well, including figuring out how to get more exposure and visibility about your business, how to clarify and define your next ultimate direction, how to separate your business and personal life. Sound familiar? Another thing, are you also really frustrated by the fact that there just isn't enough time to do everything that you want to do? You don't know what direction or next steps to take. And Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Clubhouse, just social media in general, right? Just feels like yelling into an abandoned building. Plus, you constantly ask yourself any of these questions. How do I increase my sales next quarter? How do I increase my sales next year? How do I get more of the right clients and customers? How do I use social media to grow an online presence? And maybe perhaps you found yourself recently saying to yourself, as you reflect on this past year of your business, just saying, you know, social media just sucks up time and money and doesn't produce results. Or I don't have enough time. Or do I do everything myself? Ugh. And if you've been saying those things, we're back to the present time here. We're here live with Debbie. And I wanted to make a quick note. If you've been saying those things to yourself and if you are frustrated, I do have a premier training called How to Grow Your Purpose Driven Business Without Burnout sleep deprivation or meditation because no matter, yes, it may be the end of the year. You may not be where you want to be. You may be deciding to take December off for whatever reason you may be, but it's time for you to calmly breathe, confidently hustle, and really truly hack digital marketing in the year 2022. And if you're ready for that, then I invite you to my premier training, how to grow your purpose-driven business without the burnout, sleep deprivation, or meditation. We're going to go into how to find the time to do it all. We'll be going into how to unstuck your income and have the purpose-driven business that makes the impact that you want and how to ensure your business runs efficiently so you can productively maintain an online presence of 2022. So I'll be dropping those link in the comments. Absolutely. And but enough about that, enough about me. Um, we are here with Debbie Barker, the Reiki master, yes. And for those who don't know how to pronounce it, it's Reiki, like you're raking the leaves, Reiki master, yes. Um, and so I wanna get into Debbie more about, she's been sharing some great tips with us. So if you haven't yet seen it, make sure you are rewinding and playing it back. But she's sharing some wonderful tips with us on how you can find your relaxed self this holiday season. And Debbie, I wanna know, and I'm sure other people also wanna know, how did you know you had this energy gift, right? Like, I know you, like, yes, you went through some training and certification, but I'm sure if it was like me, like when I, I've been problem solving all my life, right? But I didn't realize it was a gift. I didn't realize it was a gift when I was like five years old. I realized it was a gift through some, you know, moments in time. And I was like, oh, I guess this is a skill. Oh, this is actual gift. Oh, okay, great. Right. <laughs> and now people problem solve. And so, you know, then I got better at it and all that jazz. I got the business around it, all that jazz. But how did you, Debbie, know that you had this energy gift? Well, there were two main things that happened. The first was when my mother crossed over the 24 hours before that, she couldn't speak, but she was crying. And my sister's wiping her eyes and her nose and she's going, mom, mom, calm down. So I would say, oh no, she's thinking about, and I would fill in the blank. I did that the whole night and it just felt normal. I mean, it didn't feel strange. And I just kind of put it aside like, well, that's just because it was my mom and and I could calm her down. I knew what she was thinking, but she just couldn't say it. Then fast forward about 10 years after that, my daughter is a freshman at UGA. I wake up at three in the morning and I know she's going through something major. So the next day at six o'clock, I still hadn't heard from her. So I called her and I said, okay, Kristen, where were you at three in the morning? And there's silence on the line. And she says, at the hospital. I said, are you all right? She said, yes. And then she explained what was going on. And I said, I almost called you about a zillion times because I could feel everything going on. She said, you wouldn't have gotten hold of me. I'm just now walking in the dorm room and turning my phone back on and you called. So I had no reason to know that she was going through anything major. So, you know, when I look back on things like that that happened in my life is like, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Right. And being able to just know that you had that sense, you know, around just things around you. Just, oh, it's beautiful. That's, that's powerful. I don't know if you guys felt that. I don't have words right now. That's how, <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to respond to that. But that was a nice question. So, <laughs> you know, we are wrapping up our time here. I want to be respectful of your time so you can get back to, you know, motorcycling uh, with your husband <laughs> and hanging out with your kids. Um, so, what final words or advice do you want to share with our audience here today, Debbie? Just breathe. When mm-hmm. things are getting really rough, just breathe. And any type of breathing, it doesn't matter. Just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And it will help. There you go. There you go. And it's so funny that you said just breathe. The main of my program is hustle and breathe for a reason. So there like you that. go. See? It's really that for a reason, folks, because... Okay. Even if you hustle, you still need to breathe, right? And Debbie has given you some great, amazing, you know, tips here with us tonight. We're so happy to have had her here tonight on how to find your relaxed self this holiday season, right? This is a wonderful time to take some time off if you haven't already planned for it because pretty much most people are taking time off. At least if you're in the U.S., most people are taking time off this season. Actually, I know in Australia, apparently they're taking the whole six weeks off, technically. So, (laughs) you know, hey. If this is a great time for you to be taking the time off and to know that, you know, you can do that because most people are anyway. So you'll be all right um, if you're worried about missing out on stuff. It's OK. It's all good. So take the time that you are taking and ensure that you're using these tips to make them happen. And for those who are, you know, want to follow up with you, Debbie, what is the best way for them to get in touch? Well, they can find me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, I do have a, a free guide. It's called Break mm-hmm. Up With Stress and Feel Your Relaxed Self Return in Six Steps. And I know you're going to put that below in comments. So if they can reach out that way. And my website is debbiebarker.com. I love it. I love it. And Melinda says, you know, this was great. Love and appreciate the tips and the energy. Thank you both. Oh, thanks, Melinda. Uh, so yeah, Melinda <laughs> enjoyed us today. So yes, yeah, if you haven't if you're watching a replay, let us know, react, share, love, comment. Um, and hey, by all means, if you know someone who needs to watch these tips or a friend of yours or a business colleague of yours who recently said to you they're taking a whole month off or they are taking their you know end of week off and they're excited for it, then definitely share this video with them to help them optimize their relaxed time with themselves, with their family, and truly ensure that they are resetting for the upcoming year ahead. And if you or anyone you know are struggling and you want to ensure that you do have the best year from a business tips perspective and tips, by all means, welcome to sign up for my upcoming training. Remember to check out Debbie's guide. The link is at the bottom here if you're watching the LinkedIn. And I just put it into the Facebook as well. Yes. Why am I breaking that song? I don't know. Because Jingle Bells. Okay. Um, with that being said, <laughs> click the link at the bottom to get Debbie's guide and get those free tips. See you all again next week, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern with yours truly, Vanessa Zami. Entrepreneurship is a marathon is what you're watching here tonight. And I hope you have an abundant rest of the evening. Chat soon. Bye.